grouchy nerd. But soft, yon antisocial weirdos, tis time to learn a game that plays at the ideal player count. One. Black Sonata, designed by John Keane and published by Side Room Games, is a solitaire hidden movement and deduction game that places you on the trail of William Shakespeare's mysterious Dark Lady, to whom many of his famous sonnets are addressed. However, historians have never reached a consensus as to the identity of this mysterious Dark Lady. That's where you come in. See, while Bill is busy writing creepy poems about her, you're gonna actually physically stalk her all across Elizabethan London. Just a real one-two punch of privacy violations against this lady. Your goal is to identify one of 12 randomly set aside women based on clues about her unique combination of three of seven possible characteristics that you'll gather throughout the city. All the while keeping track to the best of your ability of her movements around town. Place the game board in the play area and place the pawn, which is your, you, on any location space of your choice. Gather your deduction tokens and tracking tokens and place them near the board. The tracking tokens are optional, but I personally find them very helpful. Shuffle the fog cards and place them face down to the right of the board. Shuffle all the clue cards and place one face down under the game board in the labeled space. This is the dark lady you're hunting, like a creep in the night. Find the clue card with the matching suit as the dark lady and set it aside face down near the board. Set the location key cards, the little ones with the holes in them, on top of this card. Shuffle the clue cards one more time and place them face up but with the clue mask card on top to create the clue card deck. Prepare the stealth deck by first choosing one of the eight lettered positions along the top or bottom that will determine the lady's path. The four options on top are slightly easier than the four on bottom as the top sequences will have the lady move every turn while those on bottom she might not. Put the cards in alphabetical order in that position, A to Z, and remove any cards that do not have a letter in that position. Flip the deck face down and cut it by moving a block of cards from the top of the deck to the bottom to randomize the starting position of the Dark Lady. She moves in a loop, so you can do this as many times as you want and not change the order of the locations that she moves in, just the starting location. Take the countdown card and place it at the bottom of the stealth deck with the two in the topmost position. The stealth deck is to be played in hand. The card on top shows an approximation of the Dark Lady's current location based on this icon, which can be found at two or more, but never more than four, locations on the map. Last, you may place the tracking tokens on the spaces she may be. Each turn plays thusly. Update the Lady's location by taking the top card of the stealth deck and sliding it behind the bottom card in your hand. The new icon shows the Lady's new location, which is never more than one space away from her previous location along one of the connecting lines. Adjust the tracking tokens accordingly. Next, you may perform one of four possible options. Option A is to move your pawn to a new location, one space away from your current location, following a connecting line. If it's your first time in a location, you may take the corresponding location key card from the stack and place it in your collected keys area. When you visited the final location, the card beneath the stack may be placed amongst your gathered clue cards. Option B is to search for the lady. If you believe you're in the same location as the lady, take the top card from the fog deck and slide it face down beneath the top card in the stealth deck. Take the stealth card and place it face down on your location's key card, then flip both cards keeping them together. If the lady's silhouette appears in the keyhole, then you were right. She's there. You creep. You absolute creep. You may reveal the top clue card and add it to your collected clues. A clue card shows a lady you're not looking for, the traits of this lady, and finally, the key on the right will show you how many of this lady's characteristics she shares with the dark lady, depending on her suit. In the case of Mary Fitton, she has court connections, a documented connection to Shakespeare, and has children. According to the table, the rose-suited ladies share exactly one trait with Mary. The acorn suits share two of them. In our case, the thistle, the dark lady shares either zero or two of these traits. Not all that helpful on its own, so you're gonna have to gather several of these clues to see if you can narrow down which characteristics the dark lady shares or doesn't share with these other women that you've found and, I don't know, grilled or followed around long enough to figure out whether or not she has children? What is wrong with you? What is this Shakespeare guy getting you into? Use clue tokens to keep track of characteristics you think the Dark Lady may have, and place them here when you're sure. However, if the Dark Lady's silhouette is not showing through the hole in the key card, she was not at this location and you've learned nothing. Either way, the location card goes back into your collected keys area, and the stealth card is removed from the game, replaced in the travel sequence by that fog card. You may not take the option to search for a Dark Lady when the the top card of the stealth deck is a fog card. Last, the lady flees. Do you hear that? The dark lady is fleeing from you. You are engaging in an activity that is being fled from. Ask yourself who you're hanging out with. That's all I'm saying. 
Advance the stealth deck by one card for each clue card you have in your collection. Move these stealth cards in a block so that you cannot see the icons on the cards you're skipping, though do check for the countdown card, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. If the countdown card is among the cards you're moving, move one more stealth card in its place. Option C will only come up after you've added a fog card to the deck. As mentioned, you're not going to be able to search for the Dark Lady or gain any clues when the top card of the stealth deck is a fog card, but you can use the fog card. Take another fog card from the fog card deck and slide it under the fog card in your stealth deck that you wish to play. Turn over the fog card you're playing and read the special action, then place the card on the bottom of the fog deck unless instructed to discard it. Anytime in this game you're instructed to discard a card, you're actually removing it from the game. If you are unable to do the action, you immediately lose the game. Your last option is to pass and move straight to the lady's next move. This is particularly useful if you're hoping the next move the lady makes is into the location in which you're in. When you finish taking whichever option you choose, begin a new round, first updating the lady's location by advancing the stealth deck. The first time you run into the countdown card, flip it so that the one is in the topmost position, keeping the card in the same position in the stealth deck. The second time you hit it, rotate it so that the zero is on top. But if you run into it again, you lose. Play continues in this way until such time as you believe you have enough clues to identify the dark lady by her characteristics. To confront the dark lady, you must first successfully search for her at your current location. However, instead of gathering a clue, you may reveal the Dark Lady card. If the three traits you've picked match the three traits on the Dark Lady, you've successfully identified her and won. Okay, so what are you going to do now, Hotshot? You going to dox her? You going to dox some poor lady from the 1500s who would think a television is some kind of witchcraft? What kind of monster are Otherwise, you lose if at any time you must draw a fog card and none remain. You are unable to complete a fog card's action. You hit the countdown card when it's on zero or if you incorrectly identify the dark lady. If you won, gain one point for each card in the stealth deck ahead of the countdown card, not including the countdown card itself. Multiply the number of cards in the stealth deck, usually 26, by the number shown on the countdown card and add that value to your score. Then add two points for each fog card still in the fog deck. Last Last, apply any score modifiers from the chosen difficulty. The back of the book offers several ways to either increase or decrease the difficulty of the game. Compare your final score to the table in the book to see if you're a chimney sweep, a golden god, Morgan Fairchild, or the immortal bard himself whose writings you're tracking the subject of. That one doesn't really hold up. And that's how to play Black Sonata. Now get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> The grouchy nerd. You know, I started writing this. I was going to do the whole thing in iambic pentameter, but then I remembered that I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I didn't even. I didn't even know how to start.